Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis, they, he, she, and today we are looking at the somewhat provocatively titled Sex Ed 120% Trilogy by Kikiki, Tataki, and Hotomura, translated by Amanda Haley and letters by Sarah Lindsay. This series was originally published in 2020 and 2021, and this English translation, published by Yen Press, ran from 2021 to 2022. This CNN series is rated mature for language, nudity, and sex, but we shall unpack that a bit more in a minute. Content notes for a teacher who perhaps doesn't always have the most professional boundaries with her students. And perhaps I did not try hard enough, but I could not find any information on either Kikiki Tataki or Hotomura. Not terribly surprised, but there you have it. Keywords that came to mind reading this series, coming of age, consent, queer life, abortion, reproductive systems, and high school class. Flipping over to the synopsis for volume one, quote, Naoko Suji, an unorthodox health teacher at an all-girls school, doubts whether the sex ed status quo truly teaches young people everything they need to know, so she ramps it up to 120%. This sex education company is more than just dirty jokes, it's time for class. End quote. As I mentioned in my TBR video, I picked up this trilogy because it was highlighted on the podcast Chatty AF, link in the description, where they ended up doing a deep dive on comparing and contrasting their experience with so-called sex ed in the so-called United States and what seems to be the case over in Japan. With this trilogy obviously standing out is much better than either, generally. I also went out of my way to actually purchase the trilogy due to the promise of discussion of abortion which was indeed very interesting to compare and contrast with how things are over here in so-called North America. I was a bit surprised by some of the limitations in place and how you apparently need to fill out a stillbirth certificate and get the results cremated. I would have appreciated learning more about some of the cultural reasons for these limitations, as I perhaps incorrectly assume it's different from the cultural pressures over here. But in fact, in the so-called USA, only Catholics cared about abortion before the desegregation of schools But the so-called Christian right needed a new pet project to catalyze their base. Thus, the anti-abortion movement was made. But on to talking about the book itself, starting with ratings. I'm not exactly sure who in the process of the creation slash publication slash translation slash republication of this manga, this series was rated. But circling back to that, I personally felt they took things way too far. It didn't really help their causes that I ended up reading Paradise Kiss at the same time because while that series has a heady mix of nudity and sex between high school seniors, it's still only rated 16 plus. Whereas this trilogy has none of those things and is rated mature because they talk about consent, gender, and abortion. Oh no, the teens can't know that! Looking a bit at the arc of the trilogy, as I already mentioned, this manga is labeled as a CNN, which is a demographic that often does the stories of young women wrong, to be honest. And dipping into volume one, I did get a tad bit concerned about the prominence of, to be fair, clothed, boobs, and the panel or two of the characters standing around in their underwear. But that ended up being all the fan service as far as I can tell. So either it was a bit of a dubious marketing attempt to get people hooked, or the creative team learned more about how to ethically not sure that's exactly the right word, depict a high school sexual education class. There really was no need for the third volume to be saran wrapped, as it had, to my mind at least, the least objectionable visual content by a mile. But we talk about trans stuff. Oh no. I feel like if I was a teacher, I might take a bit more of an issue with Naoko's quote, unorthodox behavior. Lord knows I can be very particular with depictions of my own occupation in media. As an outsider looking in, Naoko's most questionable behavior is commented on by the other characters as such and is a goofy over-the-top premise to communicate more information to the reader and anything but her trying to get with any of her students. The latter being something I would definitely not want to read about. The way queer sexuality was also front and center in this discussion of sexual education was one of my favorite parts of the series. Still pretty unusual in my experience. As I already mentioned, gender both cis and trans is also explored with a brief explanation that some people are also genderqueer or outside the binary. Class, race, and ability slash disability were not explored. But before we conclude, one of my favorite parts was actually right at the end, as the older male vice principal toured the class's booth at the school's cultural festival and comments, quote, if we'd had sex education like this in my time, perhaps things would have been different. Goodbye. End quote. 
which is honestly just heartbreaking, but true. Rating the series, I've ended up going with three stars for volume one and four stars each for volume two and three. Definitely a very interesting and enlightening read. Bye y'all, keep reading and organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.